the apocalypse turned the earth poison. When I was five years old, I found my father's mask and I knew he was dead. I'm the daughter of a Morton Joe and I'm seeking the revenge for my father's death. Mad Max took him from me. It has been 15 years and I'm still searching for Max. All I have as evidence is his leather jacket, which I keep with me as motivation. I've crossed the harsh desert of Western Australia and now I take my search east. The climate here is harsh and I've inherited my father's condition. My flesh has been eaten away and I've had to replace it with parts from broken down machinery I found in the barren land. Once I find Max, I'll replace my skin with his. I will continue to search until I get my revenge. I chose to use Mad Max for my theme for National Pride for the Australian Face Awards hosted by NYX Cosmetics. This film put Australia on the map for the film industry. The Mad Max franchise is something Australia should be very proud of and I'm going to tell you why. The movies began in Australia in 1979 with Mad Max and then three more films followed. The reason this franchise is so special is because the original 1979 film cost between $350,000 and $400,000 which is a very low budget film. The film crew were paid in slabs of beer, which is very Australian to me. Mad Max nearly grossed $100 million worldwide and held the Guinness World Record for the most profitable film. The movie is about Max seeking revenge for his wife and child's death through the wasteland, which was destroyed by war. The film has a post-apocalyptic vibe and the harsh desert of Australia portrays this perfectly. Hope you guys enjoyed that little introduction. Uh, it was pretty dramatic. It's um, pretty me, actually. The little girl at the start of the intro was my beautiful daughter, Jordan. She played a younger version of me. For this look, I really wanted to show diversity. So I made the Amorton Joe mask, which took me a few days. It was absolutely killer. But I was pleasantly surprised at how well it turned out. I threw the costume together. The body painting took me about six hours and the cut crease alone was about an hour. In this tutorial, you will see the mask making process, the gun holster, the body painting, the beauty side of things. So if this looks pretty interesting to you, then please keep on watching. If you guys think that I deserve to make the top 15, then please, please vote for me. I used my face cast to build this mask just so I knew that it was going to fit right. I bought a breathing apparatus and I just built on top of that with liquid latex and cotton rounds. I had a reference picture of my character in front of me on a few different angles. So from the front angle, side angle to make sure that I got it as close as possible. So here I'm just building and building and building. I'm sharpening a few areas, making sure that I've got liquid latex on my fingers to make it glide nicely. I use the end of my brush to create the grooves in the gums and shape the nose and for the front panel. For the teeth, I use some polymorph plastic. This stuff's really, really cool. It comes in like this small little plastic bead form and you heat it up with some hot water and it makes it really pliable. So you can pretty much mold it into any shape that you like. Once it dries, it goes back to its white color and is very, very hard. Here I'm using tweezers just to give the ridges in the teeth. And again, I'm looking at the reference image while I do this. Once I made all the teeth, I glued them into place using liquid latex. This was really finicky and I had to do this quite a few times, but the teeth end up staying there for the whole duration that I needed it to. I built the area up around the gums to make sure the teeth looked like they were actually inside the gum with just a bit of latex and some tissue and then I carved the tissue away from the teeth to give that nice arch. To colour the teeth I used the yellow from the Deep Profound Conceal Correct palette and then just to age those teeth further I took the brown and just shaded near the top of the gums and the inside of the teeth. To set that all in place, I use the HD finishing powder. To 
To colour the gums, I mix the dark brown and the warm tone together from the Deep Profound Conceal palette and coloured the entire gum area with this. To highlight the gums, I took the NYX Above and Beyond Full Coverage Concealer in Porcelain and just feathered that lightly over the high points just to bring them forward. I used the black eyeshadow base to paint the nose and any other negative areas. I had to paint in between each of the teeth just to define them further and to give the mouth a more 3D effect. I used that same product to shade underneath the cheekbones which helped to bring them forward and create more depth underneath it. I used a silver metallic acrylic paint to paint the rest of the mask and then I feathered over the dark brown from the Deep Profound Conceal Correct palette to give it a rusty look. I screwed in some little silver screws and then I marked out where I wanted the screws with the jumbo pencil in milk. This was one of the worst ideas I've ever had. It was so hard to screw the screws into thick layers of latex. Next time I'd probably just saw off the heads and glue them on with latex. I couldn't find any cute little silver studs for the mask so I'm just taking the beads from the polymorph plastic and gluing them on with liquid latex and later on I painted them with the silver metallic paint. To remove the mask from the face cast, I just lifted the latex gently and powdered generously with the translucent powder and it came off nice and clean. I had to trim some of the edges with some scissors because they were a little bit messy and release the side straps of the mask so I was able to put it over my head. I had to touch up the cut areas with the silver metallic paint. I spray painted some white tubing with black and silver paint and then I hot glued gunned this tubing into the breathing apparatus. I bought a tanned tool belt and painted that with the same black and silver spray paint. I wanted to look as close to his holster as possible. And I bought some little toy guns that I had to paint silver and black and yeah it looked really really cool and pretty similar to his costume. It was pretty ballsy painting the design straight away with black acrylic paint so I suggest maybe using the white jumbo pencil in milk just to give you a nice outline. I coloured the dark areas using the jumbo pencil in black bean and I was pleasantly surprised at how well this went over fabric. And then I raided my partner's toolbox and took out a bunch of washers that I just glued on with some craft glue. I nicked my daughter's Elsa wig and I styled that with the Redken Forceful 23 hairspray and this hairspray held that fringe back all day. I woke up at 4 in the morning to start the makeup and that's how I feel. I didn't start until 5 and yeah, I yawn a lot through this. First of all, I start off by defining my eyebrows with the NYX Black Eyeshadow Base looking good and then I give myself a nice cut crease so basically I put the black eyeshadow base down first blend it upwards with a clean brush and then set that in place with the NYX hot single eyeshadows in Raven I use the NYX blush in crimson just to add a little bit of color to the outside and to the inside of the shadow to clean up the lid I use the NYX white eyeshadow base on a flat brush and just apply that all over the lid space and up into the wing I set the white eyeshadow base with the pigments Old Hollywood firstly in the inner corner to about halfway and then I set the outer corner with the loose pigment Venetian. Just to add a bit of fans to this I took the white liquid liner and applied that straight through the center to divide the two colors. I applied a really large wing with the black eyeshadow base and I had to set that in place using Raven again. I applied black mascara and then some of these NYX Wicked Lashes. I used the white jumbo pencil in milk for my lower waterline. And then smoked out my lower lash line with that same crimson blush by NYX. Here I'm using that trusty jumbo pencil in milk just to outline my design. I want it to look like a skull but still biomechanical. 
I used my own steampunk skull creation as reference and also a normal skeleton. I tested a spot of a copper body paint just to make sure that was the one that I wanted for my base and it was so I continued to layer the makeup until it was nice and opaque. I also use a gold metallic body paint for the cogs and a few other bits and pieces of machinery. Here I'm just sketching out the rest of my design like the neck bones. Obviously it's not anatomically correct, it's just so that it's really visible for the camera. Also the large wheel on the front representing my sternum. And on the left, so your right, um, I created a mechanical heart. I'm then taking the NYX liquid suede in Orange County and just filling in majority of the heart. This is a little bit out of focus, but I take the liquid suede in Downtown Beauty and just fill in the center of the wheel. I then take liquid suede Stone Fox and just put that into one of the other wheels. It contrasts nicely against the orange tone. This nice red is Kitten Heels and I use this for the veins and then the blue liquid suede colour in a little denim dress. Just to redefine all of our features, I just take a really fine detail brush with some black body paint and just go around everything, including adding some extra detail work like some little bolts and some lines in the gums. I then use the hot single in Raven to shade all the areas that should have a shadow cast on them like the gum line behind that first jaw panel, plus shading on the body. And in my opinion, the best part of all, I highlight with the NYX Liquid White Eyeliner. I'm highlighting all the points that light would naturally hit, and this just helps to bring certain features forward that have been lost with the shadowing. I highlight my shoulder panel using the white eyeshadow base and then continue with the liquid white eyeliner around the side of my neck. I found these cool little steampunk bits and pieces at the shop the other day, so I couldn't resist but use them. I'm just sticking everything on with Prosade. These pieces were quite heavy, but they literally lasted until I had to pull them off at the end of the day. And finally, this is the finished makeup side of things. I hope you guys like this. It's growing on me more and more. This is me with the whole get up on. If you guys love my creation, then please vote for me. Voting opens on the 18th and yeah, hopefully I get into the top 15. Don't do anything funny. I'm going to turn the camera on. And wipe your eyes. Boop. Say daddy really sad. Daddy really sad. <laughs> I think I've got that same camera. Yeah? I think I've got yeah. it's just gonna snap. Alright. Here you go. That's it. Bye, bye, bye.